dear grandchildren. I'm your grandfather. <laughs> Weird, right? Maybe you like to call me Grandpa Dern, or Gramps, or Papa Dern. I prefer Papa Dern, by the way. Perhaps you're watching this for the first time because your parents, one of whom I sired, decided that you were finally old enough to head on down to the YouTube archives downtown and check out that weird video letter that Grandpa made for you all those years ago. Maybe I'm in the back of the room over there right now, sitting in whatever the future equivalent of a wheelchair is with whatever the future equivalent of a blanket is draped over my legs. If that is the case, please bring me whatever the future equivalent of a beer is, unless, of course, the future equivalent of a beer is fermented soy ale, in which case I'll pass. So, this is a selfish letter. I'm doing this just in case my grandchildren look back at the beginning of the 21st century and wonder how things could have been the way they were. They'll know where their old Papa Nate stood on some of the issues of the day. So, hypothetical future grandchildren of mine. And by the way, if you do exist, congratulations on existing. That, you know, awesome, right? Of course, who are we to say that existence is better than non-existence? You know, Epicurious and all that. Epicurious? <laughs> better, better check that. Number one. People who want to enter into same-sex marriages should have the same rights, abilities, and freedom to do so as heterosexual couples. It's disheartening, tragic, and quite frankly embarrassing that our society hasn't set this one right yet. Number two, information should be free. Government acts like SOPA and now CISPA are bad news. Any measure that curbs the flow of information or gives a government body or a corporation exclusive and total ability to determine what information is public and what isn't is antithetical to freedom of speech and also an individual's right to privacy. Number three, time to end the drug war. A drug war creates a drug enemy, like a cartel, which kills people. Marijuana should be legal and regulated like alcohol. I don't smoke pot, and even if it was legal, I wouldn't smoke pot. This isn't a fringe opinion held by some hippies in a drug circle. And even if an opinion was a fringe opinion held by hippies in a drug circle, that doesn't mean it's not accurate. That's the ad hominem fallacy. This is something that mainstream economists and political scientists are saying that at the very least we should consider seriously revising. Number four, our current education system isn't fair. I'd prefer to live in a country and a world where if someone is willing to work hard, they'll do well in life. But presently, factors that are set before you're even born, factors like the poverty level of your neighborhood or the socioeconomic status of your household, are better predictors of your future education and career outcomes than factors after you're born. Factors like your willingness or desire to work hard or get ahead in school and life. That isn't fair. Only 8% of children born in poverty will go on to get a college degree in this country. Number five. Grandchildren, I bet you're so bored right now. You, would, you just would rather be playing your future video games, right? Oh my god, I bet future video games are really fun. Like, even as fun as I'm imagining them, I bet they're, oh, I'm getting excited even thinking about it. Like, they, I can't even imagine. Nintendo DS Plus? <laughs> it's gotta be fun. Number five, corporations aren't people and money isn't speech. The Supreme Court's decision in Citizens United to allow a few very wealthy individuals and corporations to allow hundreds of millions of dollars to enter the electoral process and therefore shape it can only lead to one thing. Corporate financing of political campaigns leads to corporate control of the government. This is a problem because corporations only care about one thing, the bottom line. And I'd like to think that people are capable of caring about a whole lot more than that. Number six, global warming is a real problem that needs to be addressed. Please tell me in the future that that isn't something that you need to take a stance on. I hope that people listen to scientists. And finally, number seven, a capitalist economic strategy that presumes that infinite growth and expansion is not only a good thing, but also that it is even possible, is at odds with a world of finite resources and natural limits. We need a new strategy. That's the end of the letter. Thanks for listening, Graham kids. Like I said, this is a very selfish letter, and I'm sure you'd rather be playing your video games, and in fact, probably have been this entire time, because, you know, Google Glass is now real, and you're all just playing video games on your eyelids all the time. And I know it's very easy just to make a video talking into a webcam, and it doesn't mean anything, and it's easy to like an article on Facebook that just repeats your own opinion back to you, and it's easy to reblog something that says something that nobody disagrees with. Reblog this if you don't like killing children. Well, I don't like killing children, so I guess I better reblog this. But making this video will hopefully keep me accountable. So that way I will go do something out in the real world. So that in the future, when you do listen to this video, everything that I've said in it is so obvious and was taken care of so long ago that you're just like, yeah, duh, Grandpa, let's, come on, let's go. Let's go eat future ice cream. Forget this. Which, by the way, is Future Ice Cream Dots where we write? Where we write about that one thing? Oh, thank God. Thanks for watching.